So we have a Westminster system of government and the role of the governor is very, very important. It's a fundamental role that protects our state constitution. So when it comes to the parliament, the parliament's made up of the crown and the upper house and the lower house. And the crown or the monarch is represented here in Victoria by the governor. It's important to note that for about the last 30 years or so, it's been enshrined in legislation that the monarch doesn't in any way direct the governor in what the governor does. So it's an independent role, but representing the Queen as Australia's head of state and the head of state of Victoria. Traditionally, the governor's role's been explained as having three main parts to it constitutional, ceremonial and community. But in reality, nowadays it really has a fourth major part which is international engagement. As a new ambassador, I'm very encouraged to see that the relationship between Indonesia and Australia, including with uh, Victoria, have been growing from strength to strength. It's a global environment and for Victoria's economic, social and cultural prosperity, we need to be engaging internationally. Governor Linda Dassault and Mr Anthony Howard have extended a very warm welcome to me and they also invited me to stay overnight in Government House. I really felt very honoured and they also hosted a very wonderful dinner and they invited also so many VIPs and relevant stakeholders from Victoria. Uh, providing me an opportunity to establish networking, something that is very important in the discharge of my mission. The governor is highly regarded by Chinese dignitaries and also Chinese uh, business people. She goes to China, represents the people, represents the state, and she, more importantly, she is apolitical. She doesn't represent one particular party. The fact that the governor is apolitical overarches all of that work. The international engagement would be quite different if it was being done by a political person who will transact uh, policy and agreements and economic strategy. So an interesting fact that a lot of people don't realise is the governor doesn't vote in state elections, cannot vote in state elections, and that's for the very sensible reason that to be totally outside politics means even giving up that fundamental right to vote. It's quite interesting because there are many aspects of this role that have changed over the years. There are many that have stayed the same. So what stayed the same, I think, is Governor's commitments to the community. This magnificent house is located in the centre of Melbourne, but we spend a great deal of time outside this house all around regional Victoria. And that is very, very important. In the old days, uh, Lieutenant Governor Latrobe did it on horseback. And now, of course, we drive and we're able to cover a lot of territory. It is lovely to see so much young talent on stage and you're another wonderful example of collaboration and connectivity in this community. It's just wonderful to, to move around our state, which is something that I do all the time as the governor for the whole of Victoria. Today I've been able to see some of our manufacturing that's pretty important because it's various items to do with our defence forces. And then for a complete change of pace, I've been meeting with some of our best and brightest young entrepreneurs and innovators talking about their industries of the future. So that's why we're here and we'd love to hear from each one of you and then perhaps ask you a few questions. It's really important to remember Victoria's state motto, peace and prosperity. And if you look at this house, you can see the reflection of the prosperity of the 19th century when we had the gold rush. But I like to think of prosperity also going very much hand in hand with peace in the sense that I think prosperity can also entail what every single person wants for themselves and their families 
and that's just a good life and a safe life and a life with equal opportunity and fairness.